Vanguard, I think, is without a doubt the worst Call of Duty game that has released in the franchise since the very inception in 2004. I, I don't think many people disagree with the fact that Vanguard's not one of the best games ever made. I think this is my favorite Call of Duty zombie game they've ever produced. You Can shut I up. <laughs> yeah, you kidding me. And to me, it's one of the most like cynically made, soulless excuses for a video game I've possibly ever played. Actually. <laughs> it just ended up being such a wonderful... Bro, Vanguard sucks. I literally sold that sh uh, This game sucks. It's horrendous. So we have a lot of diversity in that. Is it worth $60 to pay for what is a four-hour campaign? No. It's hard not to get excited when you consider the incredible battles that are featured in Call of Duty Vanguard. Oh, you, you mean like, like this one? World War II was fought on epic battlefields. Know your place, trash. I mean, we've had some pretty rough releases over the years, and you know, some of them have been a, a little off the mark and, and less than ideal for sure. Like, it's an impossible task to consistently make something better with each iteration over a 20 year period. I get that, but I think Vanguard takes the cake for the worst Call of Duty game still. Sure, Vanguard is better on a technical level than you know, some of the older ones in, in the early 2000s and so on. Like, the graphics are prettier, there's technically more stuff to do. Do, I, I guess, but the question really is, is that stuff actually any better than what was offered in years prior? I mean, we all know Vanguard is a scuffed game. I don't think really anybody's contesting that, but as, al as always the case with Call of Duty, given enough time and there's this sense of selective memory where typically only the good aspects of it come to mind. This is the main factor that drives nostalgia for what were considered bad Call of Duty games in their prime. This has been the case since COD was born and really is a broader concept concept with video games in general. Now, whether this is right or wrong to do really isn't my place to say. It's kind of just how human psychology works, I guess. But I think Vanguard is a special case where the cycle may have finally been broken. Maybe it hasn't been enough time yet, but and, and, and maybe in five years, Zoomers will remember Vanguard fondly and consider it an underrated game. What, like, whatever the hell that means, but in any case, Vanguard still seems to be pretty solidified as a genuinely bad Call of Duty game. Even with its diehard defenders, its detractors far outnumber those who love it more so than even the most controversial CODs like Ghost or Infinite Warfare in the past. Yeah, I think the... the... So why is this the case? In my opinion, this was an inevitable result of having to meet corporate deadlines at the cost of the integrity of the game, workplace harassment lawsuit issues, a worldwide pandemic, and more importantly, a real lack of vision from the very start. You know, basically, you know, <laughs> fucking, you know, motherfucker like. This leads Vanguard to making the biggest sin of all, the loss of its very identity. With older and more controversial titles, like even if they were heavily criticized and contested, at the very least it still felt like they had a vision. Maybe the vision sucked and it couldn't pass an eye exam to save its life, but at the very least it still felt like they had some kind of vision. Vanguard does not even have that much. And researching exactly what happened with Vanguard was a little crazier than I even thought, but there's a lot to unpack in just those very things I mentioned, but that's not even the full extent of it. But m my point is, despite all these less than ideal circumstances and shady motivations to get the game shipped, the biggest crime was not even having a vision that everyone was on board with from the very start. In hindsight, it's no wonder Vanguard came out so bad. A horribly out of touch campaign, a copy paste multiplayer mode, and a just downright embarrassing zombies offering that should have never been allowed to see the light of day. Iconic thing to come out of Vanguard zombies in the community is the picture of, <laughs> the and sort of just a representation. Like what the hell happened to this game? We've seen, you know, titles in the past succeed against overwhelming odds where the chips were stacked against them, like World at War, for example, but Vanguard didn't seem to be so lucky. Most of the time, it's a case of developers being crunched to get the game shipped, and that's stressful enough, but that's only the tip of the iceberg with Vanguard. 
And look, I want to be very real with you guys for a second. I, I hope we've built up enough trust at this point where you know that I'm not tearing down games just for the sake of it. I really don't like being negative about games, and I try to avoid it as it's just not my desire to spend my limited time here on Earth complaining about stuff that I hate, which is why this will be my final video that I make about Call of Duty Vanguard ever. But I also think it's important not to lie to yourself or to people when something is clearly out of line. Simply put, I praise things that I think are good and I grill things that I think are bad and unfortunately I'm not gonna lie Vanguard made me pull out the old George Foreman so these are diverse people from all around the globe uh, and and so I know the burning question you're all wanting to have answered, like who's to blame for all this? Naturally, we, we want one person or one group that we can cleanly put into a box and say that it was all on them, that it was all their fault, and they were the reason that it went wrong. But with Vanguard, it's much more complicated than that. Before we get there, we gotta understand the circumstances behind its creation as always. When you look at the game now, you see a World War II themed game with 1980s Terminator skins, uh, actual modern weaponry, the the literal EM-1 laser gun from Advanced Warfare, also, also f***ing Menendez from Black Ops 2 on the cover, like, what is going on? Vanguard is like a giant repository of all things Call of Duty haphazardly thrown together in an attempt to make it interesting or fun. In other words, Vanguard had no idea what it wanted to be or do, so it tried to be everything. Literally, this game more than any other feels like it's trying to be Call of Duty the platform rather than a standalone game that executes on some specific idea. I mean, to be fair, Call of Duty has been leaning towards becoming more of a platform rather than an individualized game for quite some time now, but Vanguard has taken this to an extreme. To be honest with you, I really don't even know what Vanguard is at an idea level. Like, it's kind of a World War II game, I think, but it has stuff from Cold War, uh, Modern Warfare, Advanced Warfare, Black Ops 2, and, and like everything else you can, like Ghost, like Rourke is in the game. Like it's not even its own game in some real sense. I specifically remember saying that Ghost had a similar problem, that it had no confidence in its direction and that it was dripping with insecurity. And I still stand by that, but my God, is Vanguard so much worse in that department. If Ghost was a slightly edgy but insecure teenager, Vanguard is that annoying ass kid that always pretended to be the best at everything. They always had crazy stories about things they clearly have no experience in, but have no real identifiable personality traits that are unique to them. They claim to be, you know, really good and well-versed at everything, but are an absolute joke in reality to everyone but themselves. And I know you know what kind of person I'm talking about. They're insufferable to be around, and you can only take them in small doses. And I'm not even exaggerating. For all these other reviews, I've been able to do, you know, a lot of stuff in one sitting, like playing through as much as I need to, having a good time in order to have a handle on what I want to talk about. But with Vanguard, I couldn't even stomach this game for more than an hour or two at a time. Time. I could only take the game in very small chunks before I was completely bored to tears or found myself wanting to do genuinely anything else. In some good news, you know, in the meantime, I, I cleaned my house, I, I got in the gym a bunch, you know, I, I went to some shows and hung out with my friends and therefore touched grass, I spent some time with my family and, and a bunch of other stuff, like, the point is, Vanguard was the first time where it really felt like an actual chore to play, and I'm a gamer, I like playing games, but that feeling should never happen in your video game, like, it's actually the kiss of death. Now, the real problem was, it seemed like nobody even wanted to make this project from the get-go. It, it seemed a little weird, right? Like, Sledgehammer Games' previous title was World War II in 2017, and granted that had its own issues, but they at least managed to do a couple cool things with the World War II idea and material, and you'd think after that, they'd want to move on and do something else this time. Like, even just conceptually, it seemed strange that they wanted to do another World War II-themed game. That should have been our first huge red flag. It's like when you're on a date and she spends the whole time talking to you about her ex, like clearly they're still hung up on some aspect and they're totally unable to move on and create a new vision for the future. From what they claim, they did it because it was a totally new way to experience World War II. Vanguard is a totally new take on World War II. 
but apparently behind the scenes, Sledgehammer Games and Raven were having trouble agreeing on a creative vision. The two studios wanted to do completely different things from the very start, which explains the lack of identity and vision that Vanguard currently has. You can see both studios shoving their ideas into this project that are just completely incongruent to each other, creating this juxtaposition that is just so off-putting. That is to say, it feels like an ego battle between these two studios who tried to assert their vision to the forefront with clearly different styles. For what Call of Duty, you know, should be, roughly speaking, they ended up making this one giant gray dirty mess. Now, on top of all that, Sledgehammer Games and Raven were also facing the trouble of some cases of harassment lawsuits in the workplace, which caused strikes from the employees who were refusing to come into work for days or weeks at a time, clearly stunting development as there were much more distracting things going on in the foreground. Also, they were still dealing with the pandemic and the setbacks and challenges those come with. However, I will say I have a little less grace for the COVID reasoning in this case, because by this point, much of the chaos of the transitional period of getting to work from home was mostly done during Cold War's development cycle. That was the game that took the brunt of that stuff. While it was certainly a factor we have to consider with Vanguard, I do give slightly less leeway to Vanguard than I did to Cold War based on the timing of all of that stuff and not to mention Activision considered doing remasters of older COD games as a placeholder for this year's Call of Duty release or when Vanguard was supposed to come out but for a bunch of reasons that wasn't a very viable or realistic option and then they pulled Treyarch in to make the zombies mode in about six seconds hey I know you know Treyarch's working on zombies you guys are working on an awesome campaign hey guys don't everybody rush over at once. The stakes are pretty high. So that is all to say Vanguard barely even had a full development team at all until around September, just before the launch of the game. And even worse, the team that was working together couldn't agree on what the game was supposed to be creatively from the start, like actual nightmare circumstances for sure. Now, this is speculative on my part, but I wonder if parts of this game were the studios actively working to spite each other, almost almost sabotaging the game from the inside just to prove a point. It's not out of the realm of possibility, and it has happened in the past. But I don't know, I, I can't come up with any other explanation to explain how bafflingly terrible some of the stuff really is. Is it incompetence? Yeah, probably a little bit. Is it developer egos getting in the way? Yeah, probably a little bit too. Is it Activision being hopelessly out of touch with games and corporate greed making exe executive decisions for a game that is clearly not ready or should have seen the light of day? Yeah, I'd also say that too. Those are all massive reasons this game suffered. But I realized something the more I thought about Vanguard. One of its biggest problems is the fact that it's hardly a game at all. Bear with me for a second. Like, in the past, COD campaigns have traditionally been focused gameplay sequences with occasional cutscenes. That's kind of the structure. But Vanguard's campaign is pretty much cutscenes with occasional gameplay sequences. It's like that's the whole attitude of the product, really. I, like, I watched so many interviews with the team that made Vanguard, and I really got the vibe that many of them don't even play video games at all. That's definitely not the case for all of them, to be clear, but this is best exemplified in Vanguard's campaign. This had the same approach to COD Ghosts and Infinite Warfare, where they like brought on a bunch of film guys or people from other media, and they wanted to add that cinematic flair to enhance its gameplay stuff, which I get that, but it doesn't always work so well like in the case of Ghosts, but it can also pay off you know, pretty well in the case like Infinite Warfare. So where does Vanguard stand with all this? Well, I like just like any other COD game that brings on either Hollywood or other non-gaming media writers, naturally I look into their history to see what else they've done. And I'm not gonna lie, we have one of the most bizarre blendings of writers to make a game about World War II. You know, one of the most devastating and bloody conflicts in human history. So who's in charge of handling such powerful, delicate, and heavy material? Well, first we have Sam Maggs, and it seems like she's mostly known for her books such as My Little Pony, Girl Squads, The Unstoppable Wasp, My Little Pony, Transformers, the Magic of Cybertron, Eve Online, The Fangirl's Journey for Leveling Up, My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic, Volume 18, 
and so on. Also credited in the writing is Tochi Onibuchi, and he's credited for writing things like Beasts Made of Night, War Girls, Goliath, Black Panther Legends, Black Enough, Rebel Sisters, and Crown of Thunder. Also credited, we have Stephen or Stephen Rhodes, who, and, and I don't know because I literally couldn't find any other previous works other than these two random books that have actually zero ratings. I just don't know much about this guy at all, to be honest. And then finally, we have Brent Friedman, who mostly did movies, but hasn't made a movie since 2012 with f***ing Food Fight. And, uh, shit happens. Oh, all right, well. <laughs> Now, interestingly, he did some work on Clone Wars episodes, which is a show I really love, so that's good, but I think you get my point. A a like, I, I want to be super clear. I'm not coming at any of them personally, and I'm sure they do fine work in their respective fields, and I'm not also trying to gatekeep or say that they're not allowed to write about this stuff, but clearly, they're not exactly what you would call qualified or experienced on obscure World War II material, let alone how to convey a story like that in a video game. And I'm not saying I'm qualified to handle this stuff with any finesse either. Hell, I, I, I'm not actually qualified to do anything. But the internet armchair critic in me is seeing major red flags with this group that are tasked with writing a Call of Duty video game. I recall saying that it's not a good thing when you, you know, change the focus on making everything so cinematic and make it as close to film or literally any other media as possible, where it hardly becomes a video game at all when everything is said and done. It's like the whole game is mostly a giant movie with tons of cutscenes, like, and you can tell this is where most of their efforts were placed but like was all this supposed to knock our socks off I i've been saying visuals aren't nothing but they don't wow the player base like they used to back in the early 2000s this would have been impressive in like 2012 but now every game's graphical fidelity has gotten to a point where this is more or less standard now and if there's nothing substantial in the game to back all of these pretty visuals up it becomes very forgettable you know, for how epic and flashy and grand scale these visuals are trying to be, it feels all the more uncreative in the actual gameplay where I'd argue it matters way more. Now, let's go back to this claim that Vanguard is supposed to be experiencing World War II like never before. By their own words, World War II 2017 was supposed to be the more traditional method of conveying the material. You know, you've got the Normandy beaches, the squads of soldiers, and the main front battles, and so on. And, and look, I see what they're getting at. We've seen that side of World War II in countless video games at this point, and I would have been fine with them telling the stories of some of the lesser-known conflicts and smaller-scale battles and people, which is what they did, but they went about it in quite possibly the worst way imaginable. Instead of weaving in some interesting story from the lesser known sides of the war and integrating it into the overall conflict that it was, we get a concept where it's entirely focused on this slapped together team of a few operatives from all different countries and backgrounds that single-handedly put an end to the war themselves. There's a lot to unpack with this campaign, and we'll get there. But also, the multiplayer, Big Picture Ideas doesn't even know what it wants to be. It's Modern Warfare 2019 mechanics for the most part, with a giant dose of Call of Duty material injected into it. I, I just don't even know what it's trying to accomplish. And zombies... Oh god help me, I've already verbally decimated it once, but I'll do it again as many times as I need to to ensure we don't get something this embarrassing again. But this will be the last time I talk about Call of Duty Vanguard, so I may as well lay it all out on the table. What's this? Huh? What's this? What's this? The Vanguard campaign is, in theory, a story of some of the battles and conflicts that were lesser known, yet still instrumental to the outcome of the war. For example, you know, focusing on the British military or the Pacific Theater, seeing into the stories of the men and women who fought in Russia's military, and so on. Again, in theory, I really like that idea. It sounds awesome, and I'd be totally on board. But in execution, we get a sloppy, CGI cutscene overload, boring, narcissistic, politically heavy-handed, mechanically dull and tonally inconsistent disaster on screen that would make Tommy Wiseau blush. In other words, it sucks. My problem is you don't even get what's advertised to you at all. You get a revisionist history retelling of the events of World War II with a cartoonishly evil villain, ignorant white guys, a Russian sniper lady who single-handedly turned the tide of the war, 
I'm not kidding about that. And also, the single most boring mission in Call of Duty that's ever been invented, and a non-plot. I mean, seriously, Vanguard's campaign is set up in which it takes place near the end of World War II, and so this, you know, ragteam bunch of soldiers are attempting to apprehend this thing called Project Phoenix that the Reich is planning and to, uh, you know, officially put an end to them. But there's really not much forward-moving plot at all. Is that supposed to impress me? The team gets captured intentionally to get them behind enemy lines and closer to their objective, and then the whole game is them in prison until a bomb blows up and then they can get the thing. Like, I'm, I'm not joking, that's the entire plot, but the meat of the campaign are flashback missions where you learn about each of the characters' backstory, diverse background and personality, and the reason they fight. There's a lot of opportunities for people to learn about new perspectives and new angles on things that happened during that time period. This entire campaign is banking on you caring for the characters and feeling their emotions alongside them. But tell you the truth, I I didn't feel anything with this campaign. That's that's probably because the, the Vicodin was kicking in, but I, I'm just kidding. But seriously, like this story is 100% writing on the fact that you find all of these characters and their stories compelling. Now, for as much as I dislike this campaign more broadly, I do admit that I think it opens up really strong. I, I really think that this sequence in which you're hopping from train to train and then sneaking into German lines is really fun, actually. And when all of the characters are together on screen in missions, it's usually pretty okay. But there's only two levels in the game in which that is the case. This and the last mission. Like, I really like all this initial infiltration and the setup of the game a lot, actually. But after you get sent to the prison, that's when it all really starts to go downhill. And this is where we're introduced to our cartoonishly evil Nazi villain man Richter and Freisinger. There's people that often seem to be forgotten when it comes to World War II. Okay, so we have Richard Webb, Arthur Kingsley, Polina Petrova, Lucas Riggs, and Wade Jackson. So most of the game is them doing nothing in the prison cell except arguing with Richter and running their mouths about themselves. Each character's backstory mission has their own overarching theme about them as a person. They all have some trait that makes them diverse and special. Let's go over them. The team leader, Arthur Kingsley, in his mission, you're kind of isolated from your unit after your plane gets shot down and then you're alone, until you find another broken squad, and Arthur learns to employ his natural leadership skills to get the mission done despite everyone else wanting to wait for more help or men just wanting to quit entirely. Kingsley learns that it's his duty as a leader to finish the mission and help guide your people into understanding why they fight in the first place. This is what it means to be a leader. We then have Lucas Riggs, who is an Australian soldier serving under a British command who just doesn't treat them very well. Lucas's whole character arc is to defy authority and move with your own conviction against the will of your commanders if what you think you're doing is right, and also punching people in the face. Polina Petrova, her whole character arc is getting revenge from the people that took her family from her. She becomes ruthless and vengeful and cares for nothing except exacting vengeance for her wrongdoers. But she didn't want to be a hero. She wanted only vengeance. And Wade Jackson is an American soldier who is a hotshot pilot who learns not to be an ignorant racist and accept help from someone who he didn't expect it from. Men of the 93rd changed Wade. They showed the flying daredevil from the clouds what war looked like in the dirt. Wade wants to be a hero to everyone at home, and really his story is about him learning to accept that he has to get help from other people, and that he's more impactful if he works as part of a team. Look, I don't mind if a game has political themes and underpinnings insofar as it's handled with a light touch. You need to be delicate to get at subjects such as these, but Vanguard comes across as so completely heavy-handed. I, I don't enjoy getting political. I make every effort not to, as it's just not what I want to talk about here. But Vanguard gives me no other choice. The game kind of went there first, so I guess I sort of have to follow. But it's just funny, the way that Vanguard portrays its story in World War II more broadly. For example, Polina's story is based on a real-life Russian sniper woman who became infamous for her lethalness during the war. And that's awesome. I have no doubt she played a real role in the events of World War II and, and, and changing the outcome. But they never said said she single-handedly turned the tide of the war. Polina changed the course of the war for the Allies and her people. Wait, 
I'm, I'm sorry, what? Helena changed the course of the war for the Allies and her people. It's just silly, and in the context of the story, I, I don't buy it. Also, with Wade Jackson's arc, he gets rescued by a black squad, gets apologized for by his friend of Latin descent, and proceeds to be extremely ignorant and racist himself. Bet you ain't never met a Negro before, neither. We ain't exactly in a credit getting business. Oh, the colored regiment who is then promptly berated by the black officer. I control the stick now, Lieutenant. You're just a man for the ride. Also, as a white man myself, I'm, I'm very triggered on their use of the term white boy when referring to Wade. Next time, I'd really prefer if they used the word cracker. And with Lucas Riggs, his whole thing is he's rebellious and loud and says what's on his mind and rebels against authority. And that's great. Fantastic, even. You know, Australians are quite known for their use of a certain C word that they say a lot. That's right, counterinsurgency, which is exactly what Lucas Riggs did. He rebelled against his authority and ultimately got the job done. But you get my point by now. Like I said, very heavy handed. The war was apparently won from this small squad of diverse soldiers who are from all countries and backgrounds. Okay, that's fair. But now let's look at all the white characters in this game. First of all, we have a racist hole two literal nazis and a british man that needs saving and then gets shot in the face but that stuff aside i think one of the major setbacks for this campaign is that it's just too unfocused i mean we only get a couple of hours and like one or two missions of each character to establish some kind of connection with them it just simply isn't enough time to get the players to care about what's going on with each individual character equally i really believe this one could have benefited from focusing on like two or three characters at maximum if they wanted to do a character focused narrative and if not if they just wanted to tell locations and cool small battles fine but then get rid of this whole like prison break plot stuff but again they clearly had no idea what they wanted to do so they just haphazardly tried to do everything okay so now you know the basic character arcs and plot and all that stuff but let's talk about gameplay for a bit the best you can hope for in a campaign with a trash story is interesting gameplay sequences and levels in ghost another campaign with a terrible story it at least had about 50 percent of its missions be somewhat unique or have some cool gameplay stuff in Vanguard, I honestly cannot think of a way to be less creative or interesting. Once again, backing up my theory that this was primarily made to be a movie rather than a game. They're so focused on storytelling and dazzling visuals that they forgot to make the actual gameplay fun at all. It's not even bad exactly, it just doesn't do anything interesting. Like in World War II or Cold War, for example, those campaigns had their problems as well, but it at least felt like they were trying to do something unique on occasion. Cold War had a lot of these adventure game mechanics and multiple endings baked in. Some of the levels have variances depending on your behavior, but there's none of that stuff in Vanguard. It feels like they're wanting to rush through all of the point and shoot gameplay to get back to the cutscenes, which is usually the opposite case. I found myself putting down my controller for minutes at a time, which, you know, I don't care what game you're playing, you should never feel the need to put down your controller for an extended period of time while the game that's being played, like, like that's like a cardinal sin of game design. I cannot recall any other Call of Duty campaign in which it unengages the player for so long that they get idle controller fatigue, like it's crazy. But in any case, Vanguard tried something with each character's unique backstory and gave them some kind of ability related to their traits. For example, Kingsley, because he's a leader, can tell people to shoot things or whatever. Polina can, like, focus on people, I think, and, and Lucas carries a lot of grenades and so on. They gave each character a little unique mechanic that they can take advantage of, and this reaches its high point in the final mission where you pass off to playing as each character. Like, th like that stuff was kind of cool, I, I guess, but otherwise, the gameplay is so unremarkable that it it it's so obvious it wasn't their main focus, or at least over the story, that is. There's absolutely zero out of game systems in the campaign matter of fact i'm pretty sure there's not even things like basic intel drops like damn near nothing besides the bloated cutscenes and boring gameplay levels and story and speaking of which let's get back to that train wreck get on with it so basically the plan was to get caught from the start kingsley didn't want the rest of the squad to know that the capture was genuine so that they would play along but wade got away and when they finally caught him he put like a a a, a, a bomb in the wall or something i honestly can't remember exactly what they said it, it they blew right past the whole thing but oh, I, uh, 
I borrowed a bomb from the Ruskies and turned myself in. We got about, uh, about an hour before that wall blows wide open and we waltz right out of here. So this means they're toying with Richter and then and then and then eventually Freisinger becomes the new Hitler after he dies because apparently that was the plan from the start or something and then the bomb blows up and then the plan commences and for killing Richard Webb the lads end up breaking out of the cell and then turning on Richter after toying with him and then killing him in their prison cell I guess you could say he did not see that coming Wait, do you guys hear something? Who's who's playing drums in my house? Hey, who's playing drums in my house? Yeah, could you could you like keep it down? I'm just trying to record some Yeah, no, no, no. No, it's all good. I I appreciate it. No, no, don't worry. I'm just trying to make a, 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 vi a video about an embarrassing video game. So if you could keep it down just for like a second. Yeah, no, I appreciate it. Thank you. Anyways, then, so our team, through the power of friendship, all work together to escape the prison facility and defeat the Nazi man once and for all. But before doing so, Freisinger talks about how the U.S. will apparently give him, like, diplomatic immunity or something for complying. The nations will make sure I'm well taken care of. Uh, he even continues to sexually harass Polina even as he's about to be executed. Perhaps I might even start a new family. So they they finally kill the guy or whatever, and then they get what they came for, the Project Phoenix thing. And then because Wade Jackson is the pilot man, he flies the airplane out of the area. On board the plane, they find all kinds of new adventures to get into. They literally describe their experience in World War II as this fun and exciting adventure they went on with their friends. Hang on back there! Wait. Our mission was complete. But there be more. Forged in the fires, we were the tip of the spear. Not only is this very disrespectful to the people who actually gave up their lives in World War II, but they portray it in this story as a small group of like six people that won World War II themselves and are now ready to go on more fun and wacky adventures. And at the end of the day, it all leads to this experience that your players will find ultimately boring. We were the Vanguard. Subtlety is really the name of the game here, and there's no nuance or subtlety to anything. It's political lecturing, it's visuals, or it's storytelling. All these overdone cinematic cutscenes will never stick with you in the way that the subtle raising of the flag at the end of World at War, or the absolute despair of Raul Menendez, or the cigar that Price lights at the end of Modern Warfare 3. The key is everything with a light touch, and Vanguard does not understand that one bit. I felt exhausted and bored by the end of this. I felt like I was lectured at for multiple hours at a time and played essentially the World War II equivalent of My Little Pony. And in this level, you really get to see what what makes her become that way. You know, she's... If Sledgehammer's goal here was to tell a different side of World War II and enlighten us on other aspects of the war and stories of these real-life heroes that people should know about, then they completely failed. If their goal was to tell a narcissistically framed, borderline factually wrong retelling of the events of World War II in a way that was both totally boring and pointless, then congratulations, they succeeded with flying colors. Look, take away the heavy-handed politics, the silly story and plot and cutscenes, the core issue is there's not a whole lot of game to be had, and the gameplay that it does have is not horribly interesting besides maybe like the final mission. The whole campaign is dependent on you resonating with these characters in some way, and if you don't, you're left with a cookie-cutter basic plot and nothing else to carry it home. I'm not being hyperbolic, I actually felt a sense of joy when this campaign was over. It was easily the biggest chore to complete in the entire series hands down. It's clearly a case of tons of people's ideas being put into this big melting pot. Melting pot of people and ideas and perspectives that- And hey, look, nothing against anyone who worked on the game personally once again. It's just that this project was a misfire and that's okay. There's just not much substance here really once you manage to scrape off all the politics and bloated story. To me, I still hold my ground on this being the worst single player installment in the series, but what really killed it above all else was a lack of vision. Again, there's a few small gems in the gameplay here and there that are really good and some great moments for sure, but it does not compensate for how poorly handled everything else was. This campaign was clearly not a success no matter which way you slice it, that much is obvious, but how about the rest of the game?
So, I'm not gonna lie, revisiting Vanguard after playing the new Modern Warfare 2 and a bunch of other titles in the meantime as I've been doing these reviews, this MP caught me completely off guard in a couple ways. And I I'm pretty sure this was my least played multiplayer at launch. I try to give every Call of Duty a fair shake on release whether or not I think I'll enjoy it in the long term, but I played Vanguard for a mere few hours and was ultimately over it after a little bit. And what I mean by getting caught off guard, the tone and feel of the game was so dramatically altered from the last time I played it, which is a good and bad thing. But most importantly, I was caught off, off guard in a good way because I realized I could actually move in this multiplayer again. After playing World War II 2017 and the new Modern Warfare 2, that gave me a certain like muscle memory and, and just pace that I, I, I kind of like just ingrained into my head. And I kind of didn't realize how slow those games actually were when you compare it to Vanguard, for example. I have to be honest, it felt so damn good to, to be able to traverse and move around again in a way that felt freeing and still had that arcadey fast pace that Call of Duty has always nailed. So as far as I'm concerned, it, it got the most basic thing right. The game is fun and, and to play and engage with at the most fundamental level. Now, movement and the overall game pace of that is just one piece of the puzzle, but I forgot about Vanguard Multiplayer's genuinely best feature or option, and that is combat pacing. So, when searching for a game mode of your favorite type, you can choose between like Tactical, 6v6, Blitz, or Assault, which basically adds the player count on each team, making it much more interestingly paced experience. I love this, and I can't believe I'm saying it, but Vanguard got this right in a way that I don't think any other Call of Duty has really been able to manage the same way. Yeah, like, uh, uh, Modern Warfare 2 has tried their, their ground war or invasion thing with, like, larger player counts, but none of them are as quite neatly done as Vanguard. However, there is a big downside to the system. Number one, this can really dilute the player base. Too many different, like, Q variants means that, you know, menu lobbies for certain things may be really hard to come by. And also, it can create some great experiences, but also, there are some horribly slow low and boring ones like Red Star 6v6. I'd rather watch like like a, a, a Yu-Gi-Oh battle on TikTok than play a full match of this nightmare map and mode. All right, Nova Summoner attack was 1700. That I will not let slide because I'm going to activate Storming Mirror Force. Wait, what? Vanguard's multiplayer would basically follow in the direct footsteps of Modern Warfare for its structure, and they're not even trying to hide that fact. I mean, they admit it. Now, personally, I think the lack of innovation had something to do with the fact that Sledgehammer and Raven were not able to agree about things, so they had to copy and paste a bunch of things that were already done and just give it a fresh coat of paint and, you know, a new look and a few gameplay tweaks. For example, Vanguard uses the new gunsmith system, the attachment variants, you know, and there's tons to choose from. Most of it's junk, but but, you know, you get the idea. Gotta be real, I think it was cool when Modern Warfare did it, and at least in MW2, they tried to expand on the idea with attachment tuning, you know, there was an attempt at innovation there, but Vanguard doesn't do anything new or interesting with this concept whatsoever. It's literally just a copy-paste from Modern Warfare. I guess there is one minor mechanic that's different, like, they sort of tried to bring back weapon proficiencies from Modern Warfare 3, it seems, and it's kind of cool in this game, I guess, but it doesn't take that idea nearly to the extent that it could have gone. Not to mention the perks and equipment are virtually identical to Modern Warfare. There is a few new perks or otherwise rearranged ones, but largely nothing too noteworthy to separate it from its predecessor. However, credit where it's due, I kind of like the implementation of field upgrades in Vanguard, actually. They feel integrated well, they don't feel like too overpowered or, or broken, they're very natural, and there's some really cool ones like the Cypher ability that you can use to extend your killstreak for one more life. Totally busted, yes, but Vanguard honestly has some kind of fun stuff in its creative class. Admittedly, that's a lot of thanks to the legwork that was done from Infinity Ward with Modern Warfare, but hey, I mean, can you really blame them for doing something with a proven working formula? Unfortunately, though, despite Vanguard often going out of their way to add things that are clearly not World War II themed, they, they really don't get there with killstreaks. 
Granted, I think Vanguard's killstreak selection is better than World War II's, but even the max streak, the ball turret gunner, in both games actually, but in Vanguard, it's so boring and so lazy in this game. You can't even do anything like zoom in or do anything else other than hold one button down. Those of you who have used an AC-130 compared to this know exactly what I'm talking about. Like, there's some cool stuff in here, but I, I really do think Sledgehammer Games has always had a difficult time with killstreaks across all their titles so far i really enjoy vanguard's maps i mean there's there's quite a few of them they launched with actually a bunch of maps when the game came out and with all the different ways that you can engage with these maps through the combat pacing filter or the champion hill mode a bunch of neat special playlists and whatnot vanguard's core gameplay is honestly a lot of fun there's a ton here that i really do appreciate that being said there are some things that really irk me and that i dislike quite a lot for starters, my question is, what exactly is Vanguard multiplayer? Is it a World War II game? Well, at least on launch, and at first it was, but now, I, I, I don't even know if I could say that. Like, the problem is, there's no discernible identity or tone or feel to this, and I know I keep bringing that up, but it's important. For example, there is the EM-1 laser weapon from Advanced Warfare in your World War II game. Again, there is also the Terminator. There is also Snoop Dogg. There is also a modern-day rifle in your weapon selection. I could go on for hours, but here's what I think. Sledgehammer Games launched Vanguard as a World War II-themed game, trying to catch a specific vibe and tone. And then they realized the game is horribly dull and dry if they don't do anything else. And then Raven Software were like, well, I mean, the community wants all these other things in it, and, and that would make them happy, right? Like, if we add Shipman, or we add Dome from Modern Warfare 3, or all these other things from other Call of Duty titles, they were trying so hard to be people pleasers and cater to the community that they lost anything special that the experience in and of itself could have been. And let me be clear, once again, I'm not against having out-of-pocket stuff in your game, or, you know, a few wild, off-the-wall things that are just meant to be for fun, but you need to do it carefully. In old Older Call of Duty games, you know how they did this. And in Black Ops 2 or, or like Modern Warfare 3, yeah, there was some like odd stuff every now and again that would get added, but it was, you know, just writing that fine line without breaking the feel of what the game was trying to be. Otherwise, you know, you run the risk of just making your game entirely forgettable and ambiguous if you just slap everything into the experience. Let's try a quick mental experiment, all right? What comes to mind right away for you when I say Black Ops 2 multiplayer? Most of you probably picture something like this, or maybe this perhaps, or any one of these uh, of these very specific traits that anyone who played Black Ops 2 multiplayer can identify with. There's a lot of shared memory there, I'm sure. Now, what comes to mind when I say Vanguard multiplayer? Does this come to mind? Or, or this? My point is here, now nearly everyone is likely going to picture something wildly different to the next guy. That's because Vanguard MP isn't actually one thing. It's trying to be Call of Duty the brand and trademark, not a Call of Duty the game. The general sentiment, as far as I can tell around Vanguard, is that it was more or less a reskin of DLC or, or for Modern Warfare, and, and after replaying it for a little while, I can't exactly disagree. I gave mostly praise to Modern Warfare, and in, in some of the regards, I have to give the same props to Vanguard's multiplayer, but I can't give them as much credit because that stuff is copy-pasted homework from Infinity Ward. Like, IW actually made it, and Sledgehammer Games were like, yo, that looked good. But it's like they more or less just took that and then did a bunch of little things slightly worse. Let me complain about one of the most seemingly insignificant and minor things, but in my opinion has huge implications on how fun a Call of Duty actually feels to play. In the past, I've talked about the different styles of kill pop-up animations. This is like the, the, the plus 100 thing that pops up when you get a kill or something. I remember saying that Infinite Warfare struggled here too, since they were super small and barely visible. I personally think that a lot of the raw feel and satisfaction of getting a kill comes down to the sound and visual feedback. And Vanguard gets the sound stuff right, like the hit marker sounds are great. But why on earth are these kill pop-ups so damn small? They are so tiny that they may as well be non-existent. And this is what I think Classic COD did so well with stuff like the original MW2. One of the reasons those games were so satisfying is because they truly nailed the visual and audio feedback. 
but why make the worst version for this ever for Vanguard? I, I truly do not understand it. I know it seems super nitpicky, but I really do think it's underappreciated how important that actually is. And I suggested the same thing to the UI UX designer for Modern Warfare 2, but while they acknowledged it, they didn't seem to implement that idea. Now, one thing they gotta quit doing is trying to sell us on these destructible environment claims. It's almost never a good idea and always gets clowned on. Destructible environments are throughout the game. It's on every map. It's like the, the state that the map starts at is gonna look different from the state that it ends at. <laughs> every interview I watch, they're actually grasping at straws trying to come up with things that make Vanguard special or any reason that it's separate to the, the last Call of Duty game. And that's why I think all of these super extra and convoluted out of game menu systems exist. This is meant to give the illusion that the game is more depthful and interesting than it really is. They did the exact same thing in World War II 2017. You, you, like, you just don't gotta be doing all the slides. Just make a great game and let the game speak for itself. I don't know, maybe y'all are gonna crucify me for saying this, but I actually did, in all honesty, have some fun with Vanguard's multiplayer. I will say that I think it has far superior map design and movement than World War II 2017, and possibly even Modern Warfare 2. The movement was a big factor in my enjoyment, admittedly, but while the create a class and killstreak stuff are rehashed, old hat, kind of boring, just not that special, it, it still works at least, as most of it is already from Modern Warfare. Vanguard gets a lot of stuff right with core gameplay, and the combat pacing system is honestly amazing. However, at this point, I, I just don't really know what Vanguard MP even is. There's also just a, a ton of remade maps that add to that feeling of not really doing its own thing and just borrowing everything from older Call of Duties. And not to mention, there are no factions in this game. They deliberately made that choice so that now there's not even those basic teams and announcers that you would remember. This th The way I describe Vanguard MP is a very technically competent and fun game. I would be lying if I told you I didn't enjoy myself a little bit when playing this one, but I can't shake the feeling that it's missing its soul. Whatever that thing is that makes a COD game special to people is non-existent. This is why I don't think there's really anybody who says that Vanguard is their favorite MP ever. Most people, you know, I identify with one or more of the special traits that make Call of Duties in the past and make them special, and that attachment makes it their favorite. Vanguard's fun, sure, but there's nothing special to attach to. This means it will likely be forgotten as just a very mediocre or average MP experience with nothing really unique to offer. It tried too hard to please the community and give them everything they wanted, and they forgot what it means to make an actual incredible standalone experience. So originally for this part of the video, I had a much more thought out and scripted section for zombies. I, I, I spent some time like thinking everything through and writing my stuff out and then I recorded it and then I went back and listened to it and I deleted it. I realized I just want to be a bit more open and honest and have a candid discussion about Vanguard Zombies because this will be the final time that I ever talk about it. I made two other videos kind of discussing them in a more retrospective way about why the games didn't work. And if you want to understand the nitty gritty details about why the games failed and why this game specifically died on launch then you can go watch those and I and I highly recommend it but in this video I want to take a more or less bird's eye view at the entire package of Vanguard zombies as a whole because it's really interesting Vanguard is pretty much divided into two different epochs there's like the first half of the year and then the course corrected second half of the year and we talked about the issues that Vanguard was facing you know creatively and the studios not being able to agree on anything but this became Came even worse when Activision literally made the the Treyarch B team come over to Vanguard and start making a zombies mode and this was the worst decision possible for a couple of reasons number one they did it way too late in 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 the game's life cycle this was like two months before release remember I said September was when they finally had a full team and that's when I assume production for Duran Fong started like the first map and we all know at this point we've gone over in painful detail how like 
painfully underdeveloped Duran Fong actually was. It literally wasn't even an alpha build. Like speaking just from a perspective of content within the game, it was shockingly empty. And, you know, Activision didn't really say anything about it. The problem was they hyped it up before it released. I can only assume they did this because they would sell people on the Treyarch name like, oh, if Treyarch was making this year's zombies mode, people would be significantly more confident and would put their trust that, hey, it's probably going to be pretty good. A lot of people were like, yo, I liked Cold War zombies. I may as well give this a try. But what they didn't tell you was that this was, you know, a much smaller Treyarch team given a much shorter budget, shorter time limit and everything else. And what we got was, you know, to be expected. As I was replaying it, it really hit me that this should have never released. Th like, this was fundamentally not going to work from the start. And I know that sounds obvious, but what I mean is, like, they were obviously, you know, developing this under very heavy constraints, and it wasn't in an optimal position when it launched. But instead of trying to be like, oh, we're going to tune this, we're going to tweak this, we're going to add these things, and it's going to be good... Honestly, somebody needed the humility to look at this project and say, from the foundation, from the get-go, this was not going to work. I said it in a past video, but I still believe it. This was the only project in Call of Duty's history, as far as this mode is concerned, to get zombies wrong. Even the other off-brand experiences like World War II or IW and, and even even Treyarch things like Black Ops 4, maybe they got some of their mechanics a little controversial, but they never got the basics of what Zombies is wrong. None of those did, except Vanguard. It was one of those things, again, where it's like, this should have never launched from the start. They should have looked at this and be like, hey, this just isn't working. I'm sorry. Like, I know Activision wants to ship Zombies, but this is going to do so much more harm than it is good, and I wish that that conversation was had internally because it clearly wasn't. The problem was, and you can tell this was the case for the rest of the game, they had, number one, no idea what they were doing, and they were trying to be people pleasers once again. You guys remember a couple of months after launch with Duran Fong because people were complaining so much about the fact that Duran Fong sucked and there was no round-based maps, they said that they were adding Shinonuma as a round-based experience in Duran Fong, and it was like a very half-baked kind of thing. Yeah, technically it was like an infinite wave objective, but it wasn't the same as having a real round-based zombies map, and it just didn't really cut it, but it didn't go anywhere. It had no ultimate point. Duran Fong is basically the um, uh, the epitome of not having an ultimate point. There, all the updates for this completely froze. I'm sure there was boss fights planned for this. There was grief mode planned, other wonder weapons. Duran Fong was supposed to be vastly different than what it ended up as, and that was only map one. Duran Fong had, bar none, the worst impression ever for a zombies map. That includes base maps or DLC. And all it did, instead of, you know, having... Uh, uh, this 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 mildly positive effect that I'm sure Activision was anticipating that people would get hyped because Treyarch was making it and buy the game. All it did was make Treyarch look bad and also make zombies as a whole look terrible because Duran Fong is the most unfun mixing or, or or version of zombies you've ever played and it's like an unmitigated disaster and then even worse months down the road besides all of the you know attempts at people pleasing they double down on the Duran Fong formula and release Terra Maldicta which is basically the same exact objective you know game type but horribly unfun and arguably even worse because the map is you know less tightly knit. For those of you who have never played it, first of all, good, you have a pure soul, but I'll, I'll, you're, you're maybe wondering, why is this so bad? Why is it so unfun? Like, it just looks like regular zombies. It kind of looks like Cold War zombies. Yeah, it does, on paper, look like Cold War zombies, and in theory, it should kind of play like that, but it doesn't. It doesn't even It doesn't even play like anything I've ever played before, not in a good way. Most of the game is you waiting around and doing nothing. You're either running around or waiting for portals to take you to your different objective, and if you do go to a different objective, it's usually a place that was five feet from where you're originally standing in the first place. There was no pack punch camos when this game dropped. There was no wonder weapons. There was no leaderboards. There was no pause button. Literally, none of the basic drywall that makes up a zombie's experience was present at all. That includes Duran Fong and Terra Maldicta. This was multiple months into the game, and no like main Easter eggs had been released. And and the small Easter eggs that were er that were in Terra Maldicta, there was an Easter egg that got removed for absolutely no reason, and they didn't say anything 
anything about it. It's like, what what the actual hell is going on? And then after Terra Maldicta got a horrible reception, as you know, was anticipated, they literally said, hey, we're going to be remaking the game from the ground up. Like clearly y'all aren't responding to this. So we're going to try and change it up, which is fair enough. But then it went multiple months where there was zero zombies content, which again, fair enough because they're, you know, making something different. And what they did make to be fair is much better than the two previous experiences. But Again, you can clearly look at all of these things now in hindsight, and you can and you can tell clear as day they had no clue what they were doing. With the final two maps in Vanguard, the third one we got after Terra Maldecto was Shinonuma. It was a remake, a, a reimagining of sorts, and again, I've gone over this before, but to be honest, Shinonuma is the best map in the game, and it's not just because it's Shinonuma. I mean, maybe that's a part of it. It's just fundamentally a good design, but in Vanguard systems, you know, they're a little jank, but the, the map itself isn't too bad the easter egg is quite fun it's got a boss fight that's mildly entertaining and it doesn't actually play all that terribly it can be entertaining for about an hour or so it's at least way better than drawn fong in terminal decta it's playable and you, you might even enjoy yourself a bit but what i do not understand is what was the thought process behind not starting with an experience like this why begin with the clearly riskier and and you know maybe not thought through as well Duran Fong kind of gameplay when you could have started with Shinonuma. The thing is, Sh Shinonuma has great fundamentals, and I mean that on the Vanguard version. Like, its Easter egg is actually really decent. It's it's a good design, the steps make sense, they're fun to do, they're not annoying, and they actually flow well with the game systems. And it's like, yeah, I really do think people still would have made fun of Vanguard zombies, even if they launched with Shinonuma. Like, my brother in Christ, this map came out in two 2008. But if it was the case that Shinonuma just couldn't be ready by the time Vanguard launched, then don't launch it with the game. Like, it may as well not even come out because of all of the gapped time they had during Vanguard's life cycle where there was no Zombies content. They may as well not even launch with Zombies. It actually would have been more hype if they added it like months down the road at this point instead of everybody getting extremely hyped and then disappointed with Duran Fong and Terra Maldicta. Like, it, it, it's this short-term thinking that Activision thought that they need to have Zombies in order to the game when in reality they should have somebody needed to have the humility and be like this is not ready and Shinonuma in and of itself is by no means some masterpiece, but comparatively speaking to Duran Fong and Terra Maldicta, it is a breath of fresh air and it's a giant step in the right direction. So at least they somewhat course corrected and they got the hint at some point down the road. And then they did release one more final map called the Archon, which had a, you know, big boss fight that they worked on with Court Effects. This, they had to end the year off with a bang and clearly all of the development time, budget, time and money went into making this boss. Boss. And once again, credit words due. I played it again recently, and it is mildly fun. It's better than Shino Numa's boss fight. I'll give it that. It's the best boss fight in Vanguard, but that's not really saying much. Um, it's it's a multi-stage boss fight, which the visuals of this and the scale of it is a lot more visually threatening than it actually is mechanically interesting. It's actually only got about one or two moves you need to learn and, and respond to, and the gimmick is that you essentially like throw these crystals in these plants, and they give you you uh, a, a charged rock and then you throw it at this obelisk and then you can do damage to the boss very simple very straightforward three general phases and then you just deal damage to different spots of court effects what's hilarious as well is when you kill him he just disappears they didn't even have like a, a proper death animation for him he there's like this flash and then he just becomes small and then he falls into this hole and then that's it there's not even a cutscene for this map you get a wonder waff at the end and then the portal takes you back to uh, again, literally, I, I cannot stress how hilarious this is. The map itself of the Archon is Terra Maldecta re-released with a green filter, and I'm dead-ass serious about that. So let's think about that for a second. Let me let me go ahead and break this down. So when we when we consider this in its entirety, Vanguard Zombies has four maps. Okay, you know that's like a, a fairly general offering. That's a lot of games have done that. But so we have Duran Fong, and part of Duran Fong is Shinonuma. It's got about half the map inside of it. So Shinonuma is a part of it, but Duran Fong is the first map. Terra Maldicta is map number two. Uh, Shinonuma is map number three, and again, not really a new map because a lot of it was already in Duran Fong. And then map number four, besides the boss fight, I mean, the arena is actually in Terra Maldicta as well. So, 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 so there's really only two maps in the game, really, like, to be honest, there are 
two maps total and they sold it as four so I, I don't throw this word around a lot but this genuinely feels and probably is a scam I mean the quality of all these experiences aside for now just on face value the fact that two maps got more or less released as four that in and of itself is genuinely criminal and then when you factor in the fact that the maps themselves suck for the most part like it gets even worse Originally in my script for this section, I spent a lot of time detailing, you know, all of the different minute details of the zombies maps and why I think the gameplay really d doesn't work. But again, I've realized I've already gone over that and please watch my autopsy review or any other ones where I really discuss that stuff in depth. I've already gone over it, but what I find really interesting above all else about Vanguard Zombies was how it really did actually unite the community. I, I mean, it's not a an amazing thing that we got united over such a negative reason, but this was the first time ever I have seen the zombies community virtually uniform on one opinion. We all were in agreement that the game sucked, like, and it was something that we all kind of came together on. It was a beautiful thing, really. I mean, every game, more or less, has been split down the middle in some sense. You know, there's some that are more beloved than others, and some have been slightly more controversial, but there's always been the diehard fans and then also its opposers. But with Vanguard, it was like pretty much everyone was, was on the same page, and it's like, hey, we expect better than this it was from a literal standpoint you know we didn't get the content that we were pretty much promised we got repackaged uh old maps and 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 very recycled content and all of this backtracking and attempting to course correct just made the game look so insecure and sloppy and it's not just for zombies as we've gone over that's like how the rest of the game was handled too but for zombies specifically i hate to put it this way but it feels like the entire like mode was made by like a team of amateurs i i don't even like putting it this way but but there are literal custom maps made by one or two people that are genuinely 10 times better than anything that was put on Vanguard, including Shinonuma and the Archon. And it's just like, what, like, what are, what were y'all thinking over there? Was this intentional sabotage? Was this to send some kind of message? I don't know. I'm sure they didn't, some people didn't want it to come out this way, but this was Activision being like, we have to have zombies in the game, regardless of it, uh, whether it hurts our reputation or not. It was a mistake from the get go, and it should have never seen the light of day like I said it was one of those things that somebody needed to look at it and be like this is never going to work this was easily the darkest time for zombies but the way I look at it and I'm trying to be optimistic about it is I think it may end up being a good thing in the long run because everyone was so off put by this experience a lot of people including myself closed the book on zombies and just put it down for a bit and I think that after a long period of time where we just aren't thinking about it when it finally does come back around it will be much more exciting than if they tried to force another zombies mode again and again year after year either in the past you know Modern Warfare 2 we just got or in the game that they're releasing in 2023 if they stop trying to do these like half-ass experience every year and then save it for when it's going to be an actual banger even if it takes longer i think in the long run activision and, and treyarch and sledgehammer whoever would be able to repair their reputation with the community you know using that method sorry i feel like i've ranted on long enough but i get very passionate about this stuff basically my point is vanguard was a misfire from the beginning and no amount of additional content or tweaks or updates i know Nothing would have actually made this work because the foundation was already shoddy and corrupt. It just wasn't going to happen. And so any, you know, additional effort to, you know, cover it up or put stuff on top of it was just all in vain. And it's sad, really. But again, I think it may end up ultimately being a positive thing in the long run. Vanguard was a really weird game, man, and I know you guys don't need to me to tell you, like, how strange and scuffed Vanguard actually is. I'm sure you figure that out by yourself, but I hope you, you know, enjoyed my my take on the matter and my examination of everything. This was a, a, a strange one. I have to say this is the Call of Duty I enjoyed the least after going back to replay these for a lot of reasons, obviously. The campaign was literally bottom of the series, in my opinion. Multiplayer's fun, but not anything special, and Zombies was also bottom tier for the series. It's it's kind of impressive to be honest and hopefully we don't see anything like this again and you know the player counts and even like if you go on twitch the the stream category for vanguard is an actual graveyard like nobody is left playing the game and even some of the less popular experiences that I would argue have more identity still have a, you know, diehard player base around it. And this just goes to show that making Call of Duty this like giant ambiguous gray mess is not always the smartest idea. 
and I really hope Sledgehammer and Treyarch and Activision and everybody learned something from this. I hope we all did as players, and this was a very interesting one to examine. If you guys want to catch these episodes early, I do upload them early on my Patreon. You can watch them before anybody else there. If you want to check it out, all the link to all that stuff is down below in the description. But also, if you guys enjoyed the video, consider subscribing for more. And again, chat, hopefully Vanguard was the true rock bottom for Call of Duty, and hopefully it's only up from here. We'll see how it goes, but thank you for watching. Watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.